A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. A very soft opening today because um, I got kind of big news. Come here. We've got a new cat. <laughs> it's a black one and I actually already have known her. Look at her, she's so cute. Um, little story behind that. Uh, we, we have so many animals now. My grandma, she sadly can't deal with herself anymore and we had to take her in. Um, she can't deal with the cat anymore either. So yeah, now we've got another cat because we just couldn't um, dare to put her away to a different family or life because we have known her from before. So yeah, we've got another cat and if you feel like supporting us having a bunch of animals here um, and rescuing a bunch of animals, uh, you can feel free to leave a tip down there my PayPal link down there in the description. Maybe I'm going to buy her some pet food or something for her or new bed. I don't know. Yeah, that was the announcement for today. And now we are going to dive into the new video very quietly. Um, we got this infinite product here. It looks kind of funky. E divided by the square root of E times the cube root of E divided by the fourth root of E and so on, multiplied together up until infinity. And this is the product we are going to deal with and I hope you are going to enjoy the video. So let's grab a bit of chalk and we are going to rewrite this at first because all those roots can be rewritten using powers. For example, E is the same as, well, E to the first power obviously. Then the square root of E in normal cases E to the one half power, but since it's under the Bruchstrich, okay, the the Winkelen. <laughs> um, it's um, one divided by square root of e, so one over e to the one half power, so e to the negative one half power. Okay, so let's continue this process. Cube root of e is the same as e to the one third, and I think you get the drill by now. Times e to the negative one quarter, and so on multiplied up until infinity. Okay, so we got that far. Now the cool thing about the exponential function is that there's a functional equation for it. If you have a, e to the a times e to the b, it's the same as e to the a plus b. So adding the, the exponents together basically. So this leaves us with basically an infinite sum up there in the, in the exponent. So turning this infinite product into an infinite sum. This just has to do with interchanging the limits basically. And since the exponential function is continuous, we can track the limit into the argument. Be because this right here is, is just the limit of a product basically up until infinity. The exponential function is continuous everywhere in the reals. So we can just track it into the argument you could say. So this is the same as e to the one minus one half plus one third minus one quarter plus da 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 up until infinity. So we are going to rewrite this a title a bit more. That's kind of a funky alternating sum that we got right here. So this is the same as I'm going to use the exp um, notation just to make everything more clear. So this right here is the infinite sum where. So what do we have as running index? We are starting at one and if we rewrite one, that's the same as one divided by one and then everything becomes a bit more clear in this alternating series, giving us an index where k runs from one to infinity. And now we are going to have just Mm, okay, so we have something over k, obviously, but we also have an alternating series, so negative one to the kth power. And if you have watched my videos back in the days, like one to two years ago, you might remember this summation right here. It's something that's very dear to my heart. This right here is nothing other than the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at one. It's a function from analytic number theory. It's, it's, it's like the amazing little brother of the Riemann zeta function. And if you want to have the generalized Dirichlet eta function, then you have an n up here, for example, or a z, and then you have eta of z. Um, okay, and we know what eta of one is. I have evaluated this time and time again. And if you want to see how it's evaluated, just take a look um, in my analytic number theory playlist. This right here is the same as the natural log of two. So this right here is the exponential function evaluated at the natural log of two. And what's the cool thing about the exponential function and the logarithm? Well, they are going to cancel out, giving us as the limit just being two. That is cool, right? I mean, this infinite rooted product of e's is just going to turn into two. That is quite amazing, right? And then I was thinking, 
Are there other cool looking products that we can come up with um, using the exponential function? And there are a bunch of other series that we have used time and time again here on this channel that we can make use of. And one of the first that came to my mind is the so-called harmonic series. But there's one fact about the harmonic series that you should know. So, so at first the harmonic series, what, what is it? It's basically you, you can say that it is like this. It's basically the Riemann zeta function evaluated at one. But this is something that mathematicians don't like to hear because the Riemann zeta function is basically the, the, the infinite series or the Dirichlet series, which is meant to converge. But with the harmonic series, I have made a video on it and also a proof. We know that it's going to diverge. So the harmonic series, the harmonic series H is the same as one plus one half plus one quarter plus one fourth and so on, uh, one, one third plus one fourth and so on. So you see this right here is basically the Dirichlet eta function just not alternating obviously. This right here is basically zeta of um, one and this thing goes to infinity. So this is bad if we have e to the infinity basically if you plug this up here in the argument well then we have something that doesn't converge. But can we make it converge to something? Well, obviously, if we have one over e to the harmonic series, then this thing is going to go to zero, obviously one over infinity, it's going to go to zero, even though it's a very slow process. So in, in, in terms of speed of convergence or divergence, this thing diverges extremely slowly. So um, if we have, for example, e to the harmonic series, this is the same as, um, so we got um, e to the first power and then we are going to get times the square root of e. It's basically the same thing that we got right here, just multiply together, not with anything down there in the denominator, times the cube root of e, times the fourth root of e, and so on up until infinity. This would go to infinity, it would diverge, but if we take this into the denominator, so one over e times one over the square root of e, times one over the cube root of e, times one over the blah 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 of e, then we are going to get something which is going to go to zero overall. And yeah, this right here is also a pretty cool looking product. And here you can actually kind of notice at a glance that it's going to basically go to zero. It just looks like it, but there are obviously infinite products where something like this doesn't go to zero. That's a special case. Um, what other things are there that kind of converge easily but would look cool as an infinite product? The next thing that came to my mind after the harmonic series was the geometric series. As a reminder, what is the geometric series? If we have one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot dot dot. This is the same as if we put this into the big sigma notation, okay, big sigma balls notation. We are going to get um, just a running index starting from zero up until infinity of x to the kth power. And we know from countless videos before we have used it so often, this is going to turn into one over one minus x, but only under one condition, namely that our x is bounded between one and negative one. This is the convergence condition. Now, how can we get a nice infinite product out of that or an infinite sum. So the first thing that actually came to my mind was to plug one half into here. It fits into our convergence condition, does work out. And overall, I think this is going to give us some kind of square roots or the like. So maybe we should make use of that. So what about the summation? One plus one half plus one half squared is one quarter. Next thing, so times one half, this is going to give us one eighth and so on. Now this right here is going to converge to, so we can ignore the sigma notation, one divided by one minus one half. So one minus one half is one half. Taking the reciprocal, this is going to turn into two overall. Okay, so now we just need to put an e under it. So this right here, e to the geometric series evaluated at one half is going to give us e squared in the limit, meaning in other words, e squared, which is kind of a curious limit if you ask me, is going to be the same as, okay, now we just need to break this up a bit. This is e to the first power times, now we are going to get the square root of e. Then we are going to get the fourth root of e. Next up, we are going to get um, the eighth root of e and so on, which is kind of curious. 
Meaning one thing that I found also to be really cool is if we were to divide both sides by e, it's not equal to zero, obviously, e is equal to two, which is the successor of um, one. Um, we are going to get that e is also equal to all of those roots multiplied together of e, which is also a pretty cool effect. Yeah, this is something that I liked. And also I want to try this out with negative values, just because uh, then we are going to get an alternating series out, obviously, in this kind of form. And it's actually very similar to what we've got here, but it's going to give us a different limit, which I also found to be very curious. Now, if we were to take a look at negative one half instead of one half, what is the alternating series? We are going to get one minus one half plus one quarter minus one eighth and so on up until infinity. This is going to give us one divided by, and now we are going to plug negative one half into here. So one minus negative one half. One plus one half is the same as three over two. Taking the reciprocal, this is going to give us two over three. So consequently, if we were to take the e base to everything also up here, we are going to get as the limit of this alternating product or alternating series that we got right here, e to the two thirds or e to the two thirds. In other words, if we were to just take a look at the principal branch in the rears, we are going to get that this is the cube root of e squared. <laughs> kind of curious limit, right? This is kind of cool. It's equal to, and now we are going to put this into alternating terms. So we are going to get e here and then times one over the square root of e. So this first part is actually completely equal. Now, here's where we stray away from the original limit that we got in the uh, problem. We are going to get the fourth root of e, and after that, divided by the eighth root of e, then we are going to get the 16th root of e, divided by the 32th root of e, and so on, up until infinity. And I think this is quite a curious limit. And if you were to give this to someone, they would just think, hey, what, what the fuck is that? That is rather weird. But I think this is really cool, and I had a lot of fun playing around with this. And I actually played around with a bunch of other series um, up there in the exponent. But tell me, which other ones can you can come up with, apart from other obviously a logarithm related um, sums up here. Leave some comments down there below. Um, I would be really interested what creative things you could come up with. There are certainly other cool infinite series that we could use as the exponent. Maybe this is going to result in some very, very other cool um, looking infinite products. For example, for the inverse tension. Try it out and leave some comments down there below. And if you want to see more limits, exponential functions, calculus, and all this crazy stuff, then maybe you could be interested in the contents of today's sponsor Prian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now that was a lot of fun and do you know what also a lot of fun is? Taking a look at how those infinite products actually converge. If you were to put something like this into a graphic calculator, so all those parts of the infinite product, those sequence parts, multiply together one after another, finite sum, you can kind of alternatingly see or maybe in a not alternating fashion where the limit is going to be. And this is something that is highly visualized and maybe this is going to make more sense to a bunch of people than just this raw calculus stuff that we did here today. And if you are interested in visualizations, graphics and all this cool stuff that is also behind the mathematics that we did today, then Brian might be the perfect fit for you. Preint is your source for some of the best online learning content out there on the internet. In my opinion, it's the best online learning source if you want to learn anything out of the STEM field. Doesn't matter if it's the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry. No matter what it is you're striving for to learn in the STEM field, Preint definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And as mentioned before, all of their courses, all the things that you do over there, are backed by all of those crazy graphics that you can play around with. Vary the parameters in a graph to see how a function is going to look under basically different parameterizations, under transformations, transitions, rotations and the like. All this cool stuff. The geometry section is just full of this cool stuff where you can rotate bodies around, you can play around with triangles. Trigonometry is so highly visualized in their courses and it doesn't end there. The physics section is just full of cool stuff that you can drag around, play around with. I'm just thinking of the derivative course with, with the canon. All this cool stuff. And there's so much you can explore over there. You should definitely just check it out for yourself. 
yourself. And you can do so by using the link down there at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash FemdleMath. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already. But more importantly, the first 20 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of any year premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they already have available on their website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And I'm going to end this video now just because I want to give some rest to this poor little kitty that we got right here. She's a cute one and I think she's going to um, fit very well into our nice little family. Just look at her. She's a cute one. She's a cute one. She's a really cuddly one. Other than that, if you want to see me doing DIY projects, maybe build a bed for this little cat right here, then make sure to check out my second channel, Flemmy's Wood. And also, as mentioned before, link down there to the PayPal if you want to give a little tip to this kitty. We are going to buy some cat food for her or maybe some toys or the like. Okay, everything, everything she needs. She's a good one. Yeah, a good one. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and up until next video. I wish you guys a flammable day. See yeah.